Okay, sorry guys, I got interrupted. Um, the last thing on this slide is just that then you're, you're writing your notes based on your source. So the source, remember, can be anything. It might be a lecture that a teacher is giving. It might be a video that a teacher puts up. It might be, um, I don't know, if you go on a field trip after Corona ends um, and your teacher wants you to take notes about that experience, et cetera, et cetera. So there, uh, if it, your teacher wants you to read an article, blah, 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 tons of different sources, all of which you can take notes about. All right, I am moving on to the next slide. These are different formats for taking notes. So you can just jot these down like it, using the words on the page if you'd like, or if you want to draw pictures, that's great too. So some different formats for taking notes include Cornell notes, which you're taking right now, two and three column notes, which we will learn about next week, graphic organizers and mind maps. Those would probably be for our more visual learners. And then interactive notebooks. Um, I think most of you are doing a version of these interactive notebooks um, for your English classes. Actually, actually never mind. Hold, please. Wow. Sorry, these videos are really difficult to do with so many interruptions. Um, I don't think many of you are doing interactive notebooks because you are working on ingenuity. So never mind. If you're like, I don't know what an interactive notebook is, that's okay. Um, we won't spend too much time on those this year just because it's usually a thing where you're doing it like for a specific class throughout the entirety of the year. But we'll definitely focus on Cornell notes and two and three column notes this year. I'm going to go ahead and go to my next slide. Remember, if I am going too fast, just click pause. That is the beauty of the video. All right, next up in your question section of your Cornell notes, you can write, what is phase two or what is... What are the components of phase two? However you want to write it. Phase two is processing the notes. Remember the things in yellow are what I would really like you to put down. Also remember that you can shorten these. So you could combine bullet point one and two and say something like, make sure to think about the notes within 24 hours of taking them. Something like that. Processing the notes is one of the most important steps of this whole focus note-taking process because remember when we think about the the curve of forgetting if we are not revisiting what we have learned we will likely forget it please note that this should be done quickly after processing this isn't you're taking the notes and you're looking at it two months later because you have a big test um, we, again, are really focusing on just phase number one right now, so we will eventually get to how to process notes, but I do want you to know that that is an important step. All of these are important steps. Also note that it will get messy as you revise because you're going to highlight and chunk and delete and add and recategorize and do all of this fancy schmancy stuff with your notes, so it's going to maybe look like a mess, and that is okay. I'm going to switch to the next slide in three two, and one. So how do you revise and process through your notes? You can underline, highlight, circle, question, delete, classify, organize, chunk, etc, etc. Definitely something else you'll want to do is identify your main ideas and you might want to go back and kind of chunk or categorize information. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times when I'm taking notes, I am truly just trying to keep up with what the speaker is saying. And so I'm really not, I'm not worried about categorizing or chunking or putting things into main ideas because all I want is to get the information on paper because I know that later, within 24 hours, I am going to go back and process through those notes. And that's when I can do the categorizing and the main idea identifying and the reorganizing and all of that jazz. So that is another reason processing notes is so important, is that we can kind of reorganize our thinking if we took notes in a hurry, which we often do, understandably. Let me give you about 30 more seconds on this slide. I kind of lied. I'm just going to give you 10 more seconds, which is only 20 seconds total, so sorry. Pause me whenever. Five, four, three, two, one. 
All right, next up, what is phase three or what is what are the components of phase three? If you are thinking beyond your notes, you're asking questions about the notes and adding original thinking. I have added a folder in Schoology called Avid Resources, and one of the subfolders in there is called Higher Order Thinking, and you will find a document called Costa's Levels of Thinking. This is going to be a very important document, especially when you go to connect to your thinking. Um, Costa's levels of thinking is similar to Bloom's taxonomy if you've ever heard of that. If you haven't, it's totally fine. Um, but this document will be helpful because a lot of times when we take notes, it's pretty surface level stuff. Like we're, you know, maybe jotting down definitions, um, basic stuff. Costa's levels of thinking can help you take that surface level stuff and ask questions of it and of yourself to try and dig deeper and learn even more there, okay? So phase three, you are thinking beyond the notes by asking questions and adding original thinking. 10 more seconds on this slide. All right, three, two, one. All right, the only thing I have highlighted in yellow here is that learners should ask questions they really want to find the answers to and truly want to discuss. So here's the deal, guys. Right now, there may be some classes that you don't really want to know a whole lot more about. I get that maybe you're not super interested in the perimeter of an isosceles triangle right now. My hope for you truly is that throughout all of this remote learning, avid structure, craziness in the world right now, you do not forget that at the base of all of this is learning. And I hope and like, yeah, I just hope so much for, for all of you that you never lose the love of learning because that's really what I want you um, to have in your life. Uh, especially in college. When we talk about avid, we talk about college. And I can guarantee you in college you're going to be taking classes that mean something to you. Probably 90% of my classes in college had to do with education and I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life and I was really passionate about it and so I wanted to know more and more and more and I wanted to dig more deeply and so even if this um, like question asking doesn't seem so easy to you right now I hope if if you're finding the right classes um, that eventually it will it will become easier. All right, two more slides. Here we go. Actually, three more slides. I lied. Huh. Phase four. So remember to write your question. Something like, "What is phase four of FNT?" You are thinking about the notes as a whole by summarizing and reflecting, and we're going to do that in a moment. Not yet, but we will do that in a moment, especially the summarizing part. So this is kind of similar to the learning log that you filled out last week. This idea of just thinking back to a lesson and thinking like, okay, what was the point? What's the golden nugget of information that I can draw from this? What is the main thing I need to remember? What is the main purpose of the notes that I just took? Okay. I'll give you 10 more seconds on this slide. Three, two, one. This is the last slide we are taking notes over. This is the applying of the learning. So um, eventually, I don't know what this will look like for you all remotely, but at some point when we are all back together in the AVID classroom, I will be checking your binders. And I might do that this semester. I just don't know exactly what that looks like yet. But eventually, at some point, I'll be checking your binders. And I will eventually, after we've learned and practiced a lot more note-taking stuff, um, I will be grading your notes. Oh my gosh, these interruptions. Okay, whoa. Eventually I will be grading your notes, but um, I will never grade phase five because phase five is really something that I will probably not directly see. This is how you're actually using the notes in real life. For a, a lot of classes, that will likely look like quizzes and tests. I'm thinking especially of math. You're going to hopefully use and study your notes in order to be prepared for a quiz or test. In English class, that might look like 
you know, reading an article, taking notes over it, processing, reviewing it, so that you can be prepared for a Socratic seminar or for philosophical chairs. Um, for a history class, you might take notes over um, something that you're researching, and you're going to use those notes to create a really awesome presentation, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of the like, hey, we've taken all the notes, we've done all the steps, now how are we actually going to use this in class um, to yeah, apply our learning? There you go. I'm going to move on in five, four. By the way, you do not need to write down all the stuff at the bottom of this slide, just the top stuff. Okay, now I'm going to move on in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, last thing you are going to do is add your summary to your Cornell notes. If you are doing this on the Word or PDF format, this will be on the second page. You're welcome to, if like a lot of space bothers you, you can just create a little summary section on your own on the front page if you'd like. Um, but if that's too difficult or if you don't care, then you can just fill out the summary section on the very back. Um, if you are doing this on a piece of paper, just create your little summary section at the bottom. Here's all I want you to do. Look back at the notes we've taken, and I want you to write me a one to two sentence summary of what these notes were about. I have heard from avid teachers at the higher grade levels that their students struggle the very most with this step. So if you are struggling, email me and we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, if, if I were to say, mm, let me rephrase, if your parent or guardian or sister or aunt or grandma or whoever came into the room, had no idea what you were doing, and you just said, I, took, I just was taking notes, if this person said, oh, what did you take notes over? and you had to tell them in one to two sentences what you took notes over, what would you say? Whatever you'd say, write it down in that summary. When you are done, guys, go ahead and turn this into the assignment. If you have questions or concerns, please let me know. Thanks so much.